Yeah, I bet you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me. Uh... Let's get started, Coach. You ready? Yes, sir. Throw some questions at you. Let's start with uh, Brandon Gibson from uh, Rivals. Hey, Coach. Between your uh, coaching and playing days, you've made it across the country to a number of different stops, including being here at Oregon before. Uh, what were some of the factors that uh, drove you back here to Oregon to coach for the Ducks? The relationships. You know, I think uh, having a relationship with Coach Cristobal, um, having a relationship with Coach Coach Hayward, Coach Avalos, and knowing him in the past and the defense that he set forth. You know, it's all about relationships in this business, finding the right opportunity, the right program that, you know, that you can see, you know, the team goals, the team visions towards, and also eventually, you know, some of those individual things that I like to personally pursue, you know, for my own career. So for me coming to Oregon was about those relationships, having an opportunity to do something special with people that I know and I love and I trust. And at the same time, you know, having the opportunity to win championships, you know, and then hopefully, you know, move on to something best, better, better personally, you know, later on down the line. Next question goes to James Kerpia from the Oregonian. Rod, I just wanted to go over uh, where your guys are at uh, in terms of field or boundary uh, from Manning, Triquez, and they would just which side are each one of those guys lined up at? To be honest, with this year, um, COVID, you know, obviously causing a lot of people, you know, to really stretch their depth. So for us, we're moving guys, moving bodies all around from the field to the boundary, just because given the circumstances, you never know who you might have up for a particular week. So for us, we're just going to continue to move those bodies around, continue to make sure everybody gets work in the field, gets work in the boundary. That way, regardless of the situation, the bodies that we have available to us, we have someone to have experience going forward into that game plan. Next question comes from uh, Matt Prem, 247 Sports. Rod, uh, curious, what are your thoughts just – um, overall on, on your unit and how big was it to, to get the Amador back on, on this field and, and with your unit? You know what? Uh, I'm excited about our unit. Um, these young men have been, some of them have been here for a few years waiting their opportunity. I'm um, playing behind some really good football players and, you know, now they're up. So I've been excited just to see their passion, um, their level of football acumen developed by the day and just their infectious energy. You know, obviously, you know, adding a player that has 39 starts, you know, I believe that's the number under his belt. You know, it's really, really helpful. So having him come back to steady the room, there isn't a situation that Diamador has not seen. Um, having him back has been refreshing. Um, it's been comforting for uh, for the rest of the players, too, that they have one of their big brothers back. And it's been a lot of fun, man. These guys are hungry. They're ready to fly around and make plays, but they're in a growth mindset. And uh, our biggest thing is that we want to be able to challenge and respond. You know, the results are going to be the results, but we want to challenge every single play. And regardless of what those results may be, we want to make sure that we respond to those in the right manner, the way our culture dictates. Next question goes to A.J. Jacobson from Rivals. Hey, Coach. Um, there's a few guys on your unit that I haven't seen much of since high school, a redshirt freshman, Triquez Bridges, and then freshman J.J. Greenfield and Dante Manning. Can you just give us an update on what you've seen out of those guys and um, how they're doing for your unit right now? I tell you what, I, I would say that this this class is phenomenal, not just from a football standpoint, but from a character standpoint for how they handle their business in the classroom, you know, how they're doing the little teams showing up to meetings on time, early as on time around here. So this is an exceptional group of young men, uh, period. But those individuals that you that you mentioned are all good players, all developing at different rates. So obviously you got a TriQuest Bridges who's doing a really nice job this spring, excuse me, uh, this fall camp but you can't coach those long levers that he has. So we're being demanding of him to make sure that he can use the tools that God has given him. And um, he's getting taught on a daily basis. You know what I mean? To really bring that, that emphasis out that he has a longer body that we don't necessarily have in the room and we got to get more out of him. Um, Jonte has been a really, really pleasant surprise. He's a very, very smart individual. Um, he really has some intangibles about him that people really gravitate towards who he is. Um, sharp dude in the meeting room, excited to get him out there. You know what I mean? And continue to see how he's growing. Um, he's picking things up at a really good rate, but uh, we got a really good track record here, you know, about playing freshmen the right way and making sure that they have enough on their plate that it's not necessarily too much. So those guys have been doing very well. J.J. Greenfield is an effort, uh, tough, hard-nosed guy, man. You're going to see that dude flying around. His care factor is really high in terms of what he is about the football. He's what I call a kind of 
you know, equate that to myself. He's an overachiever. That he's gonna give you every single thing he's got on every single snap. It matters. He cares. And he cares really, 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 really a lot about it. So uh, we're really excited about JJ as well. Next up, Ashley Young from NBC Sports Northwest. Hey, Coach Chance. Welcome back to Eugene. Um, just you. going off of that, uh, your thoughts on Michael Wright and what you think his biggest strengths are on the field. Well, you know, you can't coach fast. You know, you can try and develop and get them with the strength coaches, but the dude's lightning fast. He can change direction and, 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 and <laughs> like that in the snap of a dime. So just to be around him on a consistent basis and really get a chance to hear him. Mikel's a very quiet person by nature. And really, I've been probing and prompting him to really kind of unpeel the onion, all right? Really unpeel who he really is as a person. And there's a lot of personality behind that. But obviously, man, the dude has some unreal athleticism that some things that you can't coach. But, you know, guys know the history about him, that him not playing his senior year of high school. You know, now we're really trying to catch up and dive in on the details and the fundamentals of the position. So he's been a welcome a welcome, you know, maturation for him. He's took a huge step forward. You know, he's trying to be a better leader um, every single day, and it's a process for him, but he cares about it, and I'm excited to coach him. I'm glad he's here. Next question goes to Ryan Thorburn from the Register Guard. Hey, Rod, uh, you know, having a bag packed is, is part of your business, but you're a young guy, and you've already, you know, been to Rhode Island and Minnesota and Utah and, and Oregon twice. Uh, what's this journey been like for you so far? And, you know, what does it mean to be in the position you're in right now? Man, I tell myself all the time and I pinch myself in the morning. I told our players this uh, yesterday. I pinch myself every day when I wake up and I get to come to Oregon. Um, it's been a blessing for me. You know, I did not have the silver spoon or the traditional path into the profession with a graduate assistant at this great university or any other university that, that, that or at the FBS level or any of those things. So, for me to be a high school football coach, you know what I mean, to scrape and claw my way through the profession and network through it, took me some places that I didn't think I'd ever be, but every single one of those experiences were filled with great people and great experiences for me, you know, that I left behind and, 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 and to move forward, whether it was calling plays, whether it was learning under James Franklin, learning under Derrick Mason, you know, there was a lot of things learning under the last place I was at. There was a lot of things along those stops that have made me the coach that I am. But it's been a total blessing. You know, I wake up every morning giddy. You know, I get here early. Sometimes I don't want to leave. But um, this is a blessing. It's been a hell of a journey for me and my family. And we're just excited on being here and having a place that we can kind of, you know, set down some, some, some roots here for a little bit. Next question, Kevin Wade, 247 Sports. Hey, Coach. Uh, right after you were hired, you went out and kind of had a, got a Dante Manning locked in to Oregon. One, what was that like? um that whole process like and then two with COVID and everything going on what was it like kind of coaching him up through a very different off season as he was your lone newcomer definitely um well it, it did happen fast I believe I think I got a call on a Wednesday um I was in Eugene on Thursday and we might have flew out Friday so um that was a, a really fast process so obviously we got a waiver from the NCAA being able to do that so um really hopped on the plane came to Eugene the very next morning uh, met coach uh, at the airport, and we actually flew to Dante's home. So the good thing about it, I did have some familiarity with Dante at my last institution. We did recruit him. Um, he did choose to commit elsewhere at that time. So there wasn't necessarily a dry, you know, relationship there with us. He kind of knew me. There were some students that were uh, from, um, that was committed to our last institution, my last institution, excuse me, that was on this high school football team that could reference who my character was. They interacted with me a little bit more than Dante had in the past. So I think that helped bridge the gap. As soon as I took the job, I got his information and, and we were communicating from day one, you know, just trying to get ourselves on the same page. Um, he made me a promise. I made him a promise. And that's between he and I. But uh, and so far, he's been holding up his end of the bargain. I plan on doing mine. Uh, next question, James Crippia from the Oregonian. Rod, going back to your original uh, job in the coaching profession, wanted to confirm when you were at Alpharetta, were you a member of MCA of Georgia? And uh, since it's kind of a recruiting related. To be honest, uh, back then the MCA of Georgia was really starting to get going. You know, Ahmad and I are really good friends. You know, he and I talk quite often a bit, you know, just because my roots are in the state of Georgia in terms of a high school football coach. But that's something that Ahmad has been, you know, nurturing and developing for the past few years. And it just kind of took off. Um, it kind of started off as something in recruiting to where they tied in, you know, a, a symposium or a clinic, if you would, you know, for the Minority Coaches Association, and you cannot attend the camp. 
which had all the 300 top players in the state, you know, to, to able to come there. You had to come to the convention, come to the clinic in order to go to that camp and evaluate those players. So very smart decision by Ahmad. But, uh, you know, it wasn't as, as developmental as when I was in Georgia, but uh, he and I have kept in touch throughout the years and, you know, very proud of where that program is going and what he's doing with it. He's spreading it all across the country now and everybody's kind of blanketing up off of it now. James, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, just to, to, to follow with that, Rod. Um, how important is that organization? As I know uh, you've been involved with it and, and keep communication there. Uh, Brian, Mario, uh, obviously, as you guys try to open doors in that recruiting hub that is. Um, and I, I know that PJ previously had gone down there to one of the conventions only because I was there physically and I saw him. <laughs> so mm-hmm. just that, that relationship is always uh, important to opening up that hub and recruiting. Well, here's the deal, man. You go down the South, you know, you got to have relationships, you know, to go in, go down in that deal. So for me, going into that program and seeing what it does eventually every year is open door for young minority coaches like myself who may not have had the traditional route into the profession. And, you know, that's a very near and dear heart to me because there are a lot of people that are still in the same places that still have the same desires, you know what I mean, and the passion. God just happened to chose me, uh, happened to choose me, excuse me. So for me, man, that program's always going to be, you know what I mean, in, in, in my eyes, one of the most important. You know, just because, you know, it's all about exposure, you know, all about networking and, and really what I like to call is leaving the ladder behind. You know, um, it's our responsibility as coaches, whether you're white, black, you know, what I mean, Hispanic, it doesn't matter, you know, that you help people because we've all have had help along the profession. So for me, as a profession, that, that program, excuse me, is top notch. You go through certain coaches who have spoken at those programs. They speak at them. But certain coaches like Coach Cristobal and certain others, you see them hiring those same people who may have been from the high school programs. You see those same coaches who are opening up the doors for graduate assistants or from smaller programs. So, you know, um, I'm ever so careful to make sure that we're in that program for the right reasons and not just for the recruiting reasons, because the recruiting reasons are a part of it. It is a benefactor. We benefit from that. But the true cause, the true meaning is to open doors, to network and help teach and lead the next group of coaches coming forward. Next question, Matt Prem, 247 Sports. Yes, yeah, I, I was curious. You have the unique perspective of being here in 2018 and now. Um, what's the difference between this program from when you were here in 2018 compared to now? What, being, a, being away from the, year, uh, from the program for a year, what's, what have you seen that's different? You know, I think, obviously, you know, the culture is growing stronger. Okay, uh, 2018 was Coach Crystal Ball's first season. So you're implementing a lot of those cultural uh, strategies, those cultural beliefs. And uh, now it's a lot more buy-in, you know, on this side of it. You know, I think, uh, you know, our processes are very similar. Um, you just got a different defensive coordinator, obviously a couple more pieces, but the cultures remain intact. It's gotten a lot stronger. You know, you see coaches and that have developed, you know, I've developed as a coach, you know what I mean, since the last time these guys saw me as well. So it's been a welcome, you know what I mean, just to be back amongst common people that I know and love. Sorry, we had a vacuum in the room. Uh, next up, AJ Jacobson from Rivals. Coach, I was really interested when I was reading through your resume. It just, it just seems like you're a guy that, like all coaches, you've coached in a lot of places, but you've been to every corner of the country. Like you're a, a, a guy from the great town of Lauderdale, been to the Northeast, been to the West, been to the Midwest. What can you recommend? You know, if you're out there recruiting a guy to Oregon, how can you recommend, having seen all these places, Oregon to a guy? What's nice about Oregon? You know, I think uh, it's Oregon. You only get one place, you know what I mean, to come to Oregon. Um, yes, I've been in a lot of places before, um, but each one of those experiences have taught me something. It brought me some, to some new people, um, introduced me to some new coaches. Uh, but, you know, you talk about being from South Florida, I've coached high school football in the state of Georgia. You know, I played football in Rhode Island, coached up that way, been in Nashville. And uh, when I left Nashville, you know, when I went to take the defense coordinator job in Southern Utah, my mindset then was I had never been west of Texas in my life. So I was like, hey, this is a job that I could potentially take, you know, could extend my background, can really extend my, my network in terms of me having the ability to, to work in these circles, to, to have ability to attain one of these jobs one day. So it was one of the jobs that, you know, FCS job in, in hopes of, you know, hindsight 2020, it, it really paid off for me. Time for two more. Uh, Max Torres from Scoop Duck. Hi, Coach Chance. Great to meet you. Uh, when you talk about Michael, you said that you can't coach speed. 
<clears throat> excuse me, you can't coach speed. Um, a lot of people have kind of been worried about tackling and, you know, some other fundamental things as we get going here again. So with that being said, what have been some of the skills or the, the technique things that you have been stressing with your group in fall camp? As you said, man, you can look around college football. I think that's one thing, the advantage that we do have in the Pac-12, that we have the ability to watch and observe and see what some of those difficulties or challenges may be for certain teams. I think for us, we always want to start with our process of being humble and hungry. And then what that entails is that we got to be able to handle our process, the cycle of the snap, alignment, getting the call, understanding the situations, because football is games of situations, right? So knowing it down the distance, where we are on the field, some of those things and those tips and those keys can be the difference between you making the play and you not making the play. So for us, we're really just trying to really get those guys dialed up to understand situational ball. All right, where's my help? What's the structure of this defense? All right, what's the, what's the location? Where's everybody at? Where's my field location? What's the personnel grouping, and that's a personnel grouping that is on the field right now? So I think it's the things that happen in between the ears to allow the body, all right, to make those plays. We want to use our technique to bring us to the plays. All right, we want to use our athleticism to actually make those plays. Our final question goes to Ashley Young, NBC Sports Northwest. Coach, uh, kind of a recent flashback here, but what's it like for you to see Ugo Amadi balling it out in the Seahawks secondary? And are you surprised at all by his immediate success in the NFL? Not at all, man. I I've known Ugo since Ugo was in high school. Um, Ugo went to high school in Nashville when I was at Vanderbilt at the time, and uh, I wanted to coach him then. You know, we obviously came to Oregon, and I had the opportunity to be in the room with him and Coach Hayward and, you know, Matrell McGraw and all of those dudes that were in that room at that particular time. But Ugo is an amazing individual. I knew that he would find a role for himself in the National Football League, whether that be special teams, playing nickel, playing corner, or playing safety, just because of his versatility. But, like, I'm training our players. Like, I'm training Diamador now. Like, I'm training Mikel right now. If you can handle yourself in the meeting room, if you can handle yourself – on the board and be able to take the information that the coaches are giving you in the classroom and bring it down to the grass, the sky's the limit for you. Because all these dudes here are talented. It's just putting all the little fine details together to allow that athleticism come to life. Thank you, coach. Appreciate your time. Appreciate everybody, man. Y'all take care. Next time I promise I'll have a haircut, okay? Thanks. Have coach. a good evening. <laughs>